Hey just as a heads up James is a bit grouchy this week. How grouchy? On a scale from Oscar the Grouch to Paul Pot. Is there a single good airport? I've never been in an international airport that I like. Sometimes, you know what, to be fair, you'll go to a small town and you'll go to their little airport and it's cosy and it's for welcoming and people seem to know the barista by name. Wagga Wagga Airport. Don't have enough nice things to say about it. Didn't need an airport. Do they even check to see if you've got a knife? But I've seen some airports recently. They are all alienating and fucking weird, man. Every airport... What is this addiction in airports to having weird angles? Inhuman architecture. Oblique steel neon lights glass shards of glass everywhere and not even nice shards of glass making up a stained glass window of a wide-eyed saint who loves you but just to the sky as though you haven't had enough time in the sky already this is one of the things i really look forward to about having a boat you know a Boat! When I'm in my boat sailing around the world, I won't be at airports. I'll be in ports, river ports, sea ports, probably not that many lake ports, because I don't know how you'd get in there. I don't, actually, I don't know if that's a thing. But, um, oh, the fucking airports are disgraceful. I've seen, I mean, Adelaide Airport is the nicest. Of all of them, and it's a good one to come home to, and I've come home now. Sydney Airport, boring. It's boring. LAX seems designed to be opposed to you. LaGuardia, didn't mind it. i tell you what I actually really did made me very upset was the Hong Kong Airport. This is maybe where this is all coming. I had a very bad experience in the Hong Kong Airport on the way back home. But to be fair, other things were going wrong at the time. And it wasn't just the inhuman dimensions of the Hong Kong airport. And it wasn't even just the airport, if I'm being honest. It's the fact that the Chinese persist in taking COVID seriously. Move on, China! Ultimately, we should stop moving on and be very afraid of the COVID thing. If, if they made it in a lab over there and they're still afraid of it, makes me think, what do they know about it that I don't know? What is the long COVID? Why are people dying in their 30s? Hmm? Who can say? I won't say. I won't say. I'm not going to say. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Maybe they're not dying in their 30s. Who knows? Anyway, listen, the important thing. I had a really nice time in LA on my way back. I, I was in New York squatting with Shane Gillis for days. Thank you to Shane and all those Philly boys for having me to stay, for looking after me, for getting me invested in the World Series Sorry that the Phillies didn't get up. The Astros are cheats, and I hope they take the championship away from them. If you call it a championship, maybe you call it a premiership, maybe you call it top baseball. Guys, had a really nice time in New York. Went back to L.A. Was dreading L.A. after my previous L.A. experience. Got to stay with my friend Amos Gill. Had a really nice time. Got to do a gig at the Dynasty Typewriter, opening for Simon Taylor for some industry people. Hello, industry people, if you're listening. It was a lovely gig. It's a wonderful venue. After the show, I just got on stage and played the piano and sang songs with the people who worked there. Little Bob Dylan. Little, how does it feel? You know what I'm saying? How does it feel? Well, it felt great. We went out to a diner with a man that I was told was the top sword swallower in the world. I don't know how many sword swallows there are at this point, but it's still deeply impressive. And I saw a man with a lovely cardigan and I took a photo with him. And I saw a young couple sharing a milkshake at a diner and I took a photo with them. Turns out she's a model, he's a painter. They're both on my Instagram now and I theirs. And I think I agreed to buy one of his paintings. It was of the Twin Towers. It was really lovely, sort of a naive style. I think it's the first painting he's ever sold. Imagine selling it to an insane Australian in a diner. Well, it'll be happy to have it. Although I've run out of space in my house to put paintings up and I'm getting rid of paintings. Big... Anyway, I don't have to go into detail about my painting situation. 
But what I will go into detail about are the circumstances that then led to a distinctly unpleasant Hong Kong airport experience. Went home from the gig. Didn't really get on the beers so much. I, sorry, there's a mosquito in the bloody car. Ah! Ah! Where are you? You bastard. Come out. Gotcha. Excuse me. I always feel regret after killing a mosquito. It was me or you, mosquito. Ah, uh, maybe I could have opened a window. All right. Yes, I'm back in Adelaide, by the way. Back in the Volvo, recording this podcast. Great to be home. Love Adelaide. Love my family. It's great to be here. Here's what happened. After the gig, went back. I was staying with Amos Gill and his wonderful girlfriend, Annika, who has a very, very, very slight German accent because her family's German. So whenever I do an impression of Annika, I've taken to doing it like this. Oh, hello. My name is Annika. She doesn't speak like that at all. She was super funny, Annika. I hadn't met her before. And it's always, you know, a bit weird to meet a mate's girlfriend because maybe you won't like them. And then you have to not have any commentary on that until they break up. Then you say, actually, I didn't like them. But then you can't really say that because they might get back together. And then they tell them that you didn't like the partner. And then the partner says, well, you can't hang out with them anymore. And that's hard. But luckily, I didn't have to worry about any of that shit because Annika was great. Super funny. She works on the Jimmy Kimmel show. And uh, the first night I was there, I said, well, can I come on the Jimmy Kimmel show, please, Annika? And she said, oh, of course. Yeah, but you can't do stand-up. We don't do that. And I said, I can do panel. And she said, well, why not? Okay. Book you in tomorrow. We'll tell Gwyneth Paltrow she's not wanted. It was all a bit of a laugh. And then next morning, you know, I got up. And she'd gone. She'd gone off to work. Because she's an early riser. And even though it's a late show, they start shooting it pretty early in the day. And I saw Annika that evening. And I said, Annika, uh, you didn't uh, have me on the show today. And she said, where were you? Everything was prepared. We had to end up having Gwyneth on in the end. Oh, we would have loved to have you. Jimmy was distraught. I thought, Annika, you are very funny. Huh? You're a funny lady. Never broke character. Annika. I tried a couple times. It was impossible. Anyway, so that my last night there at the house, and I'm sleeping on a blow-up air mattress in the living room, and I say living room, it's their bedroom. It's a unit. It's like quite lovely, but no place for three people to be living. I'm so grateful that you put me up on this air mattress. Sadly, I woke up in the middle of the night on this air mattress. The morning that I was meant to fly out, woke up at 2 a.m. with either food poisoning or... Is there another mosquito in this car? There is. There is. I can hear him. Man, I'm not happy being back in a country with mosquitoes. I don't know if they have mosquitoes in America. Or if they just shot them all. Where are ya? He's gone quiet. Yeah, food poisoning or gastro. The second time this year, second time on the podcast. Will I be sharing every time that I have a um, gastrointestinal crisis with the audience? Yes. Yes, I will. I said, Annika, I'm sorry, I'm going to vomit. And she said, you can do it in the toilet. You know, in a nice way. She was like, do it here. Here's the place where you do the vomiting. And I said, Annika, I can't do that. I can't have you hear me vomit. It's too embarrassing. I have to go outside. And so she gave me a, a Target bag and my friend Amos came and walked with me. It was raining. They say it never rains in Southern California, but it, it was raining that night. And then I just in an attempt at discretion and privacy, walked around the corridors of this dormitory compound, vomiting extremely loudly every meal that I'd had. The waffles from a diner, a breakfast burrito, an orange juice, two black coffees, four beers maybe, a couple beers, yeah, more than, not heaps of beers, but like four beers, maybe five beers. Oh, and one little margarita thing that wasn't very nice. Anyway. It was in a can, margarita in a can. And I'm vomiting really loudly into this, you know, and it's raining and and I can as I walk around and I'm vomiting, I can look up and I see the uh, I see people's lights coming on, all these other buildings, all these other rooms where people are living. I haven't been discreet at all, I've merely woken up a whole neighborhood. And I went back to bed and I just felt awful. And I had to get up in the morning and go to the airport, and as hinted at by the fact that I was in the Hong Kong airport, I tried to save money on my way back to Australia. I used my virgin points to fly to America, and then on the way back, 
yeah, to save like $150 instead of booking a normal 15-hour flight, I booked something like a 35-hour flight. And I had to fly to Hong Kong. Now, the flight from LA to Hong Kong is, I'm pretty sure, longer than the flight from LA to Sydney. But I flew LA, Hong Kong, Sydney, Adelaide in a sort of perverse Z shape. I'm sort of backwards Z. Hold on, I think I've got the mosquito. Hold on, if I can get this mosquito. Come on, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Are you on me? Where are you? Where are you? I think there's more than one in the car. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Fuck you. Oh, I was just going to get bitten in my car with these effing mosquitoes. Gotcha! Didn't get you. Ah! It was in my hand and then it came out. It was fine. Oh, go away! That's it. I'm going to car. All right, now I'm inside where the mosquitoes can't get me. And I would just say... Uh, Yes, if you ever do get the opportunity to fly 35 hours, including, to be fair, some stopovers, five-hour stopovers, the perfect length of time for discomfort, because uh, it's a very, very long time, but it's not quite so long that you can sleep, you know, comfortably. I did attempt to sleep on the floor next to the Starbucks at the Hong Kong airport, and most unpleasant and disagreeable. But also wonderful to be sleeping horizontally after all that time trying to sleep half sitting up. I think next time we do travel, we'll be doing it in a boat where you can nap in a hammock, is my understanding. Oh, look, I, and I don't want to seem ungrateful. It's been a wonderful trip. It's wonderful to be home in Adelaide with my family. I got to meet so many wonderful people and do so many great things. There are mosquitoes inside this house now as well. All right, serious, real talk. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't compiled a list of reasons to leave Australia. And number one at the moment is the mosquitoes and this heat. Number two, having to wear bicycle helmets. Uh, in New York, riding around with no bicycle helmet. Man, doesn't that sound better? Even if you ended up wearing a bicycle helmet, you would know that you were doing it for you. House prices would be another one. If we lived in America, I mean, rent in rent in New York is similar to rent in Adelaide. And there's really not as much going on in Adelaide. Uh, I love Adelaide. Hey, it's great. Great city. My favourite city. Best city in the world. The rent is too damn high. People working eight hours a day and 40 hours a week to summer third job. Women can't afford to take care of their children, feed their children breakfast, lunch and dinner. My main job is to provide a roof over your head, food on the table, and money in your pocket. This is politics as usual. Playing a silly game. It's not going to happen. The rent too damn high movement. The people I'm here to just can't afford to pay their rent. Everybody I met in America was so polite. But I love it here. We're going to make it work here. I have a beautiful community here. Oh, mercy me. And I'll tell you something that nice today is my friend Daniel was... Uh, he happened to be in town. I missed... I was going to open for him on Friday, but I buggered up the time of my flight. And I was still in the air, so I didn't get to do it. But he was still in town today. So I managed to pick him up with my kids, and we hung out, and we walked around the block, and it was beautiful. And then I drove him to the airport. Man, wouldn't it be nice if someone just designed an airport that was sweet and nice and beautiful? That was a nice thing that I saw in New York. Is, you know, you got to see, I got to see Grand Central Station which is just a, it's a train station, but what it really is, is a testament from people in the past saying that they love you and they love future generations. And as you go and they get on, you know, you get on the train, but they want you to have a, a beautiful life with a lovely ceiling, and great paintings and columns and all that sort of thing. Could we not do that with an airport? Could we not have an airport that we could be proud of rather than an airport that exacerbates our anxieties? Did I say exacerbates? I am too tight. Let's have this wonderful chat with Daniel Muggleton. I love you. Here's the chat. God bless. Catamaran High. All right, here you go. Hold the, hold the mic. Hold no, the you mic. don't need that. Sir Donald Bradman, we're going to get to the airport. Now you've got to thrust that right in my face. Hello, Daniel Muggleton. I'm giving you a lift to the airport. 
This is honestly the stupidest decision I've ever made. The podcast or letting me give you a lift to the airport? Letting you give me a fucking lift to the airport. Like, where <laughs> my flight is so, like way too soon and you got lost twice on the way and then you're like, is it right here? And I'm like, it's north, you fucking idiot. Yeah, but then, you know, the fun thing that I realised where to go is we saw that plane coming in from overhead and now I'm following where that plane went. I thought you looked at the sign on the road that had a plane on it. You meant the actual plane? I saw the actual plane coming in. I was like, it's over there. You've never lived anywhere else. You should just know where it is at this point. Well, I recently moved house, so I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming at it from a different angle this time. You, you know? realise the airport stayed in the same place even though you've moved house, right? Like, it's different the, for me. It's the, different. the airport doesn't exist relative to your current location. Now, Daniel Muggleton, you've just done a tour and I almost got to open for you, but I was, at the time, I was on a flight with food poisoning. Uh, I was on a 35-hour flight with food poisoning. How did your Adelaide gigs go? The Adelaide gigs went very well. I would like to point out, this is what's giving me so much anxiety what? about letting you drive me to the airport. <laughs> because like, I was like, can you open for me? And you're like, absolutely. I get home on Wednesday morning and then I get a message from you Thursday night being like, oh, actually, I got the times wrong. It's Friday night that I get in. And I'm like, the date yeah. doesn't change. But I got mixed up if the, if, the dates, if the time was going forward or backwards. Do you know what? I thought I was gaining a day coming back to Australia, but I was losing a day. You know it I'm says saying? plus one on the oh, ticket I'm next not, to the time. I'm not a good... Uh, my reading comprehension is poor. I, I think you might <laughs> legitimately be a person whose well, earth well, is flat. Can, you, can I say this? You see these ads for White Claw that was just up there? All these men drinking White Claw now? I've, I've heard, yes. How are they getting these heterosexual men to drink alcoholic seltzer? By They're advertising some it. Sort of, some sort of shirts off discotheque nightclub. You know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. Have a beer, you sissy. <laughs> Are we like, are we seriously pushing the argument you're a soft cock if you don't drink beer Absolutely. in 2022? Oh, we've got a big soft cock over here not drinking beer because you're trying to get your, your testes to pump out hot seed. Is that correct? Trying to have a child? I'm trying to have a child and I'm currently off the beers trying to get my sperm uh, sober. I can't do anything to make my sperm. Maybe I'm having different plastics to everybody else. But <laughs> now we are, look, we're here. We're at the airport. While I, I'm probably going to come around once, right? Because we've got extra time. We've got time. We, we have literally 30 minutes until the bag drop closes. All right, so I'm going to do a loop and we're going to talk about your stand-ups, where people can buy tickets. So you've got shows coming up in Melbourne, Sydney, any other shows? Uh, Gosford? Ah, known for their dogs and their beautiful boating culture. Sure, like that, that's that's what we're known for. Not for people who couldn't afford Sydney and gave up. No, I know I'm a big Gosford fan. I've never been to Gosford, but I once caught the train from Brisbane to Sydney, and it went past Gosford during the dawn, and it was like it was a very beautiful, almost pagan nature, you know, nature worship experience. Wait, there's a train from Brisbane to Sydney? Well, I had to get the bus to Casino first. It's a long, you know, it's a story that's already been on the podcast. But my important thing: Are you doing an Instagram post while we talk? Yeah. What's your Instagram post? It's, I'm putting a little clip up. Is it of me fucking up in the drive? What do you no, think? it's a little clip from my tour. I just forgot because the time zone's weird. So I'm just like, I don't schedule. I, I post everything like at the time, you know what I mean? Can you schedule on Instagram? You can schedule all the time. I didn't know that. Um, so where can people, where are these shows and where can people get tickets? Um, so the shows, uh, there's one in uh, Melbourne at the Comics Lounge. There's, Big there's... room. Big room. Big room. Uh, there's one. There's one in. There's two in Tasmania that are not selling well. Who knew Tasmania did not have a large doing, population? The north and the south. I'm doing the the Hobart and the Launceston. I don't know where they are relatively. You're gonna go to Mona. I'm not gonna go to Mona. I don't believe in modern art. I love that from you. I was lying. Mm-hmm. Oh, I accept that <laughs> position on this podcast. Now I went to Mona and I. Look, it's very impressive, but I wish it was less satanic. Um, and it is satanic. Now, uh, now we had you on the podcast before to talk about, and that's the episode called Keep It Professional, about <laughs> professionalism. Now, how many of the professional tips do you think I've put into practice? Well, I mean, th- this is a start. This is you, like, using your time wisely. Uh, it's using my time poorly, but yeah. your time wisely. That's a, It's a very important to big dog people and to, to have your way with them. No, look, you came, you hung out with my family. And we've had a wonderful day. I want one thing I did take away from that is consistency, and that's a big thing that you emphasise and you live out. And I have managed to have the podcast come. I mean, we're recording this podcast Sunday 
like the podcast comes out in four hours, right? And we are recording it now. But I took that to heart, the consistency thing, and I want you to know that that's really helped me, and that's helped me grow this podcast. It's ten times bigger than when you were on it. We're growing all the time. We're almost big enough to make money off the ads. Daniel Muggleton, I want to say thank you for helping uh, the personal growth. That's that's really kind. Well, look, I'm I'm glad. I'm glad you have some success. The Fed- Australian Federal Police just drove past us. What, and really eyeballed... Uh, I think I was speeding. <laughs> I don't think you were speeding. I'm speeding and you're, you've got a microphone and now I'm going way too slow. Fuck. I, I think it's fine. Like, I don't think there's anything against the law, like, with... Yeah, he's no, turned I, left. He's turned I, left. I, we're okay. I just hate um, when I'm driving near the police. Uh, now, the shows. Where can people buy tickets? Uh, at Mosh Ticks or at my website, danielmuggleton.com.au. Daniel Muggleton. Much respect. Go buy tickets. Good to have you on the catamaran plan. I want to. I just want to say to all the listeners of the podcast, James McCann's family is far more beautiful than he has any right for it to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were there for a good moment. You were there for a good bit. It's a, it's a beautiful time. We, we walked around the thing. We did the did the little lap. Your yeah. daughter your daughter's on the bike with the no pedals because the kids don't have training wheels no more because they, they they nailed it first time. No training anymore. These kids. Oh yeah, it took a lot of training to get her on the bike without the training wheels. No, it's good. It's a happy time. It's a happy time for these beautiful people in my family. The light has been very nice. It's good to be back in Australia.